Welcome to this video which was made by the Southwark Enhanced Intervention Service. Today's video is focusing on ABC charts. You've probably heard of them but might not know how to complete them or why they are helpful. In today's video we'll think about both of these topics but first let's look at what an ABC chart is. So what is an ABC chart? An ABC chart is a way of recording any incidents of challenging behaviour. A stands for antecedents, also known as trigger or setting. What was going on before the behaviour happened? B stands for behaviour. C stands for consequence, so basically what happened after the behaviour. The chart is not just focused on the person who is displaying the behaviour, but it is a way of capturing information about the environment they are in and what is going on around them. But why do we need ABC charts? Well, ABC charts help us to figure out why someone engages in a behaviour. It looks at the whole context that the behaviour occurs in to try to notice things that may not have been picked up at the time. The ABC chart is only concerned with facts and descriptions rather than opinions. As we cannot be there to see the behaviour every time it happens, it's a great way of recording a snapshot of the moment. The form means that we can look for any patterns that occur either in the setting, the triggers, the behaviours, the consequences, or any other factors of the context that the behaviour occurs in. They really help us to expand our understanding of why the behaviour occurs. So let's look at what is recorded in the ABC chart in more detail. Let's start with antecedents. So what is an antecedent? Well, here is where you record anything about what was happening before the behaviour happened. For example, where did the incident occur? What was the person doing before they engaged in the behaviour? What was the setting like? Think about how busy, how noisy, bright, loud. Who else was around and what were they doing? Was there an activity happening? Had there been any transitions? For example, starting or ending an activity, someone else entering or leaving the room, or moving from one thing to another. Was anything different to normal? Even things that seem minor to you or I might make a big difference. What was the plan for that time? What activities were supposed to be happening and were they actually happening or was there a delay or a change? Now let's think about what you'd write in the behaviour column. Here is where you try to describe exactly what happened. Imagine if a camera had recorded the behaviour, what would we see? There might be a few different behaviours, so try to list them all in the order that they happened. That way we can see if the behaviour escalated. This might give us clues to early warning signs. How long did the behaviour last? Did anyone get hurt during the incident, either the person who displayed the behaviour or anyone else? How intense was the behaviour? Was it the worst it can get or was it relatively minor? You can even think of this on a scale from 1 to 10, where 10 is the worst it gets. Finally, let's think about consequences. These are some of the things you might record. What did the person do after the behaviour? For example, did they leave the room or the setting? What did you do in response to or after the behaviour? Was anything given to or taken away from the person? For example, food, drinks, items. What did others do after the behaviour? For example, other service users or other people who were around at the time. Was reassurance given, either verbally, for example, by saying, it's okay, or physically, for example, by giving a hug? Was the person engaged in another activity? What happened when the behaviour stopped? For example, did another activity start? Was PRN or physical interventions used? So, some other things to keep in mind when you're doing ABC charts. Remember to stick to the facts and record things that are observable rather than opinions. Record all incidents, not just the most challenging behaviours. If there is no obvious trigger, try to think more about the setting for example, the place, the time, the people who were around, the noise level, the activity level, etc. 
Let's try an example. You can pause the video now to go and get a pen and paper if you don't already have one. On your paper, write out the headings, antecedents, behaviours, consequences. Then watch the following video and try to jot down some of your observations in each of the boxes. Dinner, Pete. Box away now. Have dinner. So let's run through some of our observations. Antecedents. He was sat in the kitchen playing with these blocks. He was repetitively making and unmaking a construction. The support worker started to lay the table for dinner by putting the plates out and verbally asked him to stop playing with the blocks because it was dinner time. She then started to remove some of the blocks from the table to get them out the way. Behaviour. He responded by making loud vocalisations and pushing her away. This escalated to him shoving the support worker. Consequences. The support worker removed the plates from the table and gave reassurance by saying, it's OK. She said that they would eat in the other room and then she took the plates and left the room. He continued to play with his blocks and the behaviour stopped. How did you find it? Don't worry if you found it hard, it can take quite a while to get used to doing this. Let's try another example. Remember, try to record your observations just as you see them. Write out the headings, antecedents, behaviours and consequences again and watch the video. Let's run through some of our observations. Antecedents. This was a tricky one as there were no obvious triggers to the behaviour. So remember, we have to look at the context and the situation. We saw that he was alone in the small lounge. He was not engaged in any activities or tasks. He was not being interacted with and had no stimulation. Behaviours. We saw that he started by hitting himself on the ears and the side of his head with his hands that were slightly cupped. He then got up off the sofa and started pressing his thumbs into his eyes while looking out of the window. Consequences. Again, there were no immediate obvious consequences to the behaviour. So we think about what he might have been getting out of it. We know that he must have been getting some sensory stimulation. We also know that he was engaging himself in an activity and it was a stimulating activity. Well done for trying. It can be hard, but remember to just give it your best go. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be hard to remember everything from an incident, especially when it's a long episode, when lots of things happen or when your emotions are also running high. As such, it's best to complete the ABC chart as soon as you possibly can after the incident, so you have the best chance of remembering it. So, to summarise what we've learnt today. 
ABC charts are a way of recording incidents of challenging behaviour. You should record facts and observations rather than thoughts or opinions. Antecedents and consequences might not be obvious, so the setting and the context are very important. Try to complete the chart as soon as possible after the incident. Each person who is part of an event should complete a chart, as they may have observed different things. We use the charts to look for patterns in behaviour, settings, triggers, consequences, etc. The findings help us to discover why somebody does a behaviour, and then we can think of ways to try and prevent the behaviour. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed the video and learned more about ABC charts. Remember, you can watch this video whenever you need a refresher on how to complete ABC charts. If you want any more support with ABC charts or with any other things related to challenging behaviour, please do get in touch with us. This video is brought to you by the Southwark EIS.